or a time length of our brain. As we continue with our theme this week of War Room, we are being schooled. I tell you, I am learning every day and I am growing. You know, I was once a child, but now I am grown. I'm eating meat, not milk. We are being schooled by the lecturer of uh, University of Kigali, who is a pastor also at a New Vision School. It is none other than Pastor Jeffrey, whom is going to take over and minister to us this morning. My pastor, Mvundiswam, over to you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, my sister. Okay. And uh, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. Uh, I want to salute everyone who has tuned in this morning. We want to thank God so much for the gift of life. We've woken up. Just like we always say, it's not the alarm. It's just by the grace of God and his enabling power. Okay. Come on, come on. I'm seeing the good mornings flowing already. Come on, let's, 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 let's flood the place again. Let's salute each other. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You just reminded me. I'm seeing the chats flowing and flooding the place. It's, it's nice to see you once again. It's, it's great. It's great. We thank God for the privilege of prayer where we can come together and we seek his face. Thank you so much. I'm seeing them flooding, flooding the place, flood the place. Good morning. We are glad that we are alive today. We thank God that we have seen this new day. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. We thank God. We thank God. Keep them flowing. Keep them flowing. Keep them flowing. We are grateful to the almighty God that we have life. Good morning, good morning, good morning. On, on, on Sunday, we, we began this series and uh, the series is uh, War Room. And uh, the first presentation that we had was don't waste your punches. The next day, that is uh, Monday, we said starve the dog. And um, yesterday we said fight back that we are called to be fighters. And this morning, I want us to consider a subject, rewrite your story, rewrite your story. And may we pray. Eternal Father and God in heaven, we are very grateful to have woken up this morning by your grace. And God, we are lingering in this place for power for a blessing and for re-energizing, rejuvenation and revitalization. God, speak to us once again this morning, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good, 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 good. Good. Nice to see you once again. In 1866, in 1866, the year was 1866, Alfred Nobel, a Swedish chemist invented the dynamite, okay? And, and, and he built up companies and laboratories in more than 20 countries all over the world. And this was a big thing back then, 1866. He invented the dynamite. And, and so in, in the process, Nobel amassed a considerable fortune. He became, he became very rich. He became very rich. And but one day, one day, Alfred Nobel awoke uh, to, to read his own obituary in the local newspaper. Okay, just imagine that. You you go to the local newspaper and alas and it's your obituary in the paper. And the obituary read, Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite, who died yesterday, devised a way for more people to be killed in a war than ever before. And he died a very rich man. Those are the words that were in his obituary. But of, of course, if, if you read the story, you will discover that the newspaper had made a mistake. It was not, it was not Alfred, but, but it was his older brother who had died. So it was a mistake, you know, 
And so he, he is shocked to find that he's the one who died. It was not really him who died, okay? And, and so this, this, this horrified him. The obituary had a very profound effect on him. Just, just finding yourself there, and, 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 the, and the talk is not that you, you did something that contributed to humanity. The words have the effect that uh, you, you, you brought up something that, was, that has succeeded and is going to kill many people than ever before. And so what, what did he do? He was touched by this obituary and he decided that he didn't want his family name to be remembered for destruction. He said, no, 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 no. No, no, I do not want my family name to be remembered for destruction. And so what did Alfred Nobel do? Well, he founded the Nobel Prize, the Nobel Prize, an award for people who, who foster peace, an award for people who make you know, tremendous contributions uh, to the society, to the world. And I know some of your people down south like Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela and uh, de Klerk and many others, I, I think Lutuli and many others have been awarded with the Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel said, now listen to these words. Nobel said, Nobel said, every man ought to have the chance to correct his epitaph in midstream and write a new one. Every man, every man ought to have a chance to correct his epitaph. What will be said about you? Come on, what will be said about you when you sign out of existence? What will be said about you? And, and that's why my presentation this morning is, you, you can rewrite your story. Come on, you can rewrite your story. You can change your story. You are the author of your life. You can take that pain and, and, and write your story midstream. I came this morning, ladies and gentlemen, in this few minutes to, to, to tell you and to tell myself that we can change our story. Come on, if you are following me closely, you can go to the chat section and say, I, 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 I want to change my story. I want to change my story. God help me to change my story today. God help me to change my story this week. How do you want your story to end? How do you want your story to end? Come on, write and say, God help me to change my story. No matter what your story has looked like thus far, no, no matter the, the, the mistakes and, and the missteps that you have uh, been through, no, no matter the, 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 the mess that you've gotten yourself into, God can help you to change and to rewrite that story. It's, it's never too late to pick up your spiritual pain. Come on, pick that spiritual pain and change the direction of your life, no matter the levels, no, no matter the tags uh, that society has placed on you or your associates have placed on you, or even you yourself has placed on yourself, you, come on, you, 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 you can rewrite your story, my friend, listening to me. Come on, you can change the story. Maybe right now your story reads, you struggle financially. God, God can help you to, to change that story. Maybe your story today says you struggle with addiction. That, that's, those are the levels. That, 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 that you've placed yourself and then people have known you for that. Come on, that story can change. Maybe, maybe your story says you are sexually promiscuous. No, 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 no. That story can change in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe your story reads husband snatcher or wife snatcher. Come on, that story can change in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have been labeled a failure or good for nothing. Come on, those, those labels can, can, can be shed off. They, they, they can drop. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you can rewrite a different story altogether. You can have a new script altogether that you're going to work on. And your story can say, you love God. He was honest. She was a faithful wife. 
or a, 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 a faithful husband. He served God, she served God. She was favored, she was blessed. He or she is a committed believer a dedicated employee, you know, those, those nice things, those can be said of us. And, and because we are children of God, those are the tags that we've got to carry. Not to say that when we uh, follow Jesus Christ, all the issues go, but, but we are work in progress. We are moving towards a given destination and, and God enables us to get to that point. Come on, I came to tell you this morning that you can rewrite your story. You, you see, my friend, you have been given the right by God Almighty to write your own story, okay? While, while he has a calling for your life, while, while he has a plan for your life, well, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, while he has a purpose for your life, you, you get to choose whether to work in that plan or not. The choice is on you. The onus is on you, my friend. You, you can say, this is how my life is going to go. This is the script I want to choose. This is how I want to live. Okay, I, I have made some one, two, three mistakes, but I, I want by the grace of God to check the pain again, the spiritual pain, and to rewrite my story. How do you rewrite your story? First, start with Jesus. Say, Jesus Christ, I come to you. Come on, I've been through this. I've been struggling with this. I've not been able to overcome. I have been known for this, but I want a new story. I want to open a new page. Come on, Jesus, help me. I want to open a new page in my life. And the Bible says it makes us new and it gives us a fresh start. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse 17, the Bible says, if anyone, if any man, if any woman be in Christ, he is a new creation. Come on, the old is gone and the new has come. So we, we've got to start with the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on, come on starting with Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And, and God, the almighty, is an expert in changing stories. I've read many stories of people who had been written off, even people who had disqualified themselves. But when Jesus walks in, come on, when Jesus steps in, he changes the equation. Come on, he changes the equation and he changes the storyline because he's, he's, he's a God who changes story. He's, he's, he's a story changer. <laughs> he is a chain breaker. I don't know what, what has held you so tight, but Jesus Christ is a chain breaker. I, I don't know what sin has bedeviled you, but Jesus Christ is, is a sin eraser. I don't know where you got stuck, but Jesus Christ can open the way for you because he, he is the way maker. He is a miracle worker. He can do things beyond your understanding, things that you and I cannot even fathom. We cannot even understand. And so this morning I came to exalt Jesus for who he is and what he can make us to be. He is willing to cooperate with you as you do the script of your life. He is willing to hold you, to help you just like that kindergarten baby who is, who is being taught on how to hold the pencil and to write A for apple. He, he, he is willing, he is willing, he is willing to work with you. And let me tell you, my friend, there is no situation that God cannot handle. There is no situation that God cannot change. That there's no sickness that God cannot heal. There's, that there's, there's no sin that, that God cannot forgive. That is good news to me. And there's no circumstance that God cannot change and he cannot alter because he can do the impossible. The Bible says in Jeremiah and in the book of Luke chapter one, is anything too hard? And the Bible says, nothing is impossible with God. You, you can invite him and he walks in, he steps in, he shows up. And he shows off his mighty power because he is supreme, he is omnipotent, and he can change things that are beyond human understanding and ability. I read in the Bible, the book of Acts, which book did I say? Acts chapter 9. He changed the story of Saul, Saul of Tarsus. Acts 9 presents us the story of the conversion of Paul. Come on, when you get time, let's go through it. But I want to, to, to glean, I want to pick only five points as we will be closing in the next few minutes. Five points that I, I lighted from this. He met with Jesus. 
And so the first point is meeting with Jesus is a turning point. If, if you really met with Jesus and you had a real encounter with Jesus Christ, you, you never remain the same again. I'm reminded also of the Samaritan woman. She met Jesus at the well and, and her life was never the same again. Paul, I mean, Saul changes direction. The, the woman in, 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 the, in the world changed that direction. When, when a person is saved, they, they must stop going in the direction they are going. They, 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 are, they are convicted by God of their sin and, and, and they start walking on a new path. They start going in a new direction. And do you know what that relevant to Paul? The Bible says Paul was even baptized. That means he made a decision and, and he's even sealing the decision. He says, okay, this thing is so serious. I, I, I want to go into the watery grave. And he says in Romans 6 that you get in and you come out and you walk in newness of life. Meeting with Jesus is a turning point. It's my prayer that this morning, all of us will have a meeting with Jesus. It's, it's my prayer that we have a new meeting with Jesus, that, that our, our perspective, our, our attitudes, our orientation, our desires and, and, and our goals and our objectives in this life may be altered by the fact that we have met with Jesus. The way we look at things, the way we look at people, the way we look at sin ought to change because we have met with Jesus. Number two, there must be a change of name. There must be a change of name. We, we, we find Paul, you know, previously referred to as Saul. He was a persecutor, but now he is an apostle. He, he was an enemy of God and the people of God, but he is now a friend and he is propagating the gospel. And also we find in the book of Genesis, Jacob, his name is turned to Israel. There, there must be some putting off and some putting on of something. You know, I have met with Jesus and I say, okay, this is it. I, I am putting this away and I am putting this on. That's what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter four, verse number 22. Ephesians 4, 22, the Bible says, put off the old self, okay? Which is a former manner of, of, of your life, which is corrupt and, and, and it has deceitful desires and tendencies. And 23 says, and, 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 and you, you get renewed in the spirit of your mind. And, and 24 says, and you put on a new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Come on, that's what I'm praying for this morning, to put off the old me. So come on, I'm praying for a change in my wardrobe. <laughs> Paul says, you've got to put on, to, to put off this, and I put on something else. I pray for a change in my spiritual wardrobe, you know, having a new outfit so that when people see me, they can see Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, we've got to change our names. You remember the story? It's an old story. You must have met with this story before. Alexander the Great had a soldier under him who was also named Alexander. So there the, are the two Alexanders, the great, the Greece, the great Greece uh, general, Alexander the Great. And there was a soldier who was called Alexander. The, the problem was this other Alexander who was under Alexander the Great was a little bit cowardly, you know, you know, wish was, you know, zigzag fella. Uh, after the young one was caught being cowardly, uh, the great general called him and, 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 and asked him, what is, what is your name? What is your name? And he asked him three times, and the younger one answered, my name is Alexander. Alexander the Great then said to him, that's my name. So you go to change your character or you change your name. And maybe that's what Christ is telling us also this morning as we start off this day. That's what the Lord Jesus says to us this morning. You either live up to my name or you don't call yourself a Christian. Come on, if we have chosen to identify with Jesus Christ, there must be a change in our story. We, we've got to rewrite our story. And, and we are not doing it by our own might. It's not by my might. It's not by my power. But by the spirit of God, he enables me as I cooperate with him, as I invite him into my life, 
he enables me to live a victorious Christian life. Number three, number three, we have a Damascus horse. We have a Damascus horse. It's, it's, it's a belief in my mind that uh, Paul or Saul was on a horse. Okay. <laughs> he was on a horse and on his mission. And so I want to say that all of us have a horse that can often take us away from God. What, what is that horse? What is that horse? What is that thing that always takes you away from God? What, what is that horse? That horse could be a relationship. It could be some sort of selfishness. It, it could be money. It could be that horse could be power that you've been riding on and, and, and walloping. Is it walloping or galloping? Walloping. And, and, and you've been riding on. It could be fame. It could be power. It could be your job that has been taking you away from God. It could be your flesh that has been dragging you and pulling you away from God. Or anything else that can take us away from, from our mission of serving God. Because that is our objective, number one. This morning I'm asking you, what is that horse? What is your Damascus horse that has been driving you away from God? Okay, will, will you get down from that horse this morning and say, okay, this, this, this is a thing. I got it. I nailed it. I got it. This is a thing. I want to come down from this horse. Or will you wait from God uh, for God until he knocks you down just like he did to, to, to Saul of Tarsus? He knocked him down. He made him blind. He subdued him. And it took him to a point of surrender. It's my prayer that this morning we will say, God help me this morning to rewrite my story. Number four, no one is outside of God's reach. No one is outside of God's reach. It doesn't matter the, the far and the depths that we have sunk into. We can rewrite our story again. Look, look, at, look, at, look, look at Saul. This guy was terrible. He aided Christians. He aided God. But his story changes. And number last, we are saved from something and for something. God saved Saul so that he can use him. God wants to use you, my friend, listening to me this morning. Are you willing to say, like Paul, I want to be a mover of the gospel. Like, like God, I want to plant, like Paul, I want to plant churches everywhere. I want to be useful in this kingdom. God, help me to rewrite my story. God, help me that I may know how to live this life. God save me, God redeem me so that you can use me. And just like Alfred Nobel, you're saying also this morning, spiritually, I want to take that pain and rewrite my story again. I want to pray with you. If that is your desire, you're saying, God, forgive me my sins. God help me to have a new slate, a new page. I want to rewrite my story. Let's, let's pray together. Come on, put up your hand. Put up your hand. You're saying, I want to rewrite my story. I know there's an icon for putting up names. I know there's, a, come on, come on. I'm seeing Wena. I'm seeing Miriam. Uh, I'm, come on, come on. Name, many names are going up. Good, good. You're saying, I want to rewrite my story my spiritual story. I want to take the pain again and go change my life. Let, 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 me, let, me, let, me, let me look things differently. Let, let me look at things differently. Let me, let me approach issues differently in my life. Let, let people see Jesus Christ in me. Let my story be different. If, if I was to die today, sign out today, I would have a magnificent story that he loved God. He lived for God. He served God. Dear loving Father, we thank you so much this morning for the privilege to listen to your word. Thank you, God, for imploring upon our minds and talking to our hearts this morning that we can rewrite our story. We can change the labels, the tags that we have placed on ourselves or our behaviors and our habits and our attitudes have branded us. Help me, Lord, that my story may change for the glory of your name. Help my brothers and sisters who have raised up their hands that, God, our stories may change. And God, we may be prepared for eternity. May you bless all of us, God, who tuned in this morning to listen to your word and to seek you in prayer. May you answer our prayers. May you touch our lives. May you step in, oh God. And, and may you show off your mighty powers in our lives. You are the life changer. You are the story changer. You are the miracle worker. You are the way maker. God, have your way in our lives today and this week, and always in our lives, for we've prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.